While the overwhelming majority of work on the painting is complete, there are aspects that require additional attention. Among them is the issue of keys. When original keys are missing, I will first turn to my stock of salvaged keys and wood to see if an appropriate match can be sourced. If none can be found, one can be cut. Holes are drilled into the keys to allow them to be secured to the stretcher. When hammered into the mortises of the stretcher joint, they will expand the support and apply tension to the canvas. This prevents waves and ripples from appearing and helps resist flaking of the paint. As the stretcher wood expands and contracts over time with humidity changes, the keys can become loose and either be lost or fall between the canvas and stretcher bar and create a dent in the painting. By securing them with fishing line and a tack, this is all but eliminated as a possibility. Much care is always afforded to the front of the painting, but often the back is woefully neglected. By installing an acid-free foam core backing board, we can not only protect the canvas from impacts and other traumas, but we can also take action that will minimize the possibility of cracking occurring in the future. By creating a stable air chamber behind the painting, the amount of flex the canvas will experience during handling is lowered, and as such, the canvas stays still and stable. As an inscription was discovered, an opening is cut in the backing board, and a piece of heavyweight PET film is used to create a window. Washered screws hold the board in place and facilitate easy, non-destructive removal in the future. At this point, all that's left to do is fit the painting back to the frame. Unfortunately, the clients didn't wish to have any conservation work done to the frame. Perhaps once they see the conserved painting, they'll reconsider, and I'll get to show you that process as well. After all the care that was given to the painting, and particularly the edges, moving slowly and deliberately when refitting the painting to the frame is only logical. Rather than using nails, brackets, and screws will hold the painting in place and again facilitate easy removal in the future. While less efficient, hand tools provide more control and precision at this stage, and there's no need to rush. Finally, my label is applied to the backing board. This label contains contact information and an ID number so that if ever in the future someone has questions, they know how to find an answer. And with that, the conservation is complete. At this point, the painting is fully cleaned of surface grime, the old discolored varnish has been removed, and the unnecessary lining and adhesive have been reversed. The structural issues have been addressed, and the piece is stable and ready for the next hundred years. In addition, and particularly exciting for me as a conservator and an art lover, the title of the piece that had been hidden for so long was finally revealed, and we can add that piece of information to the history and provenance of the artwork. Thanks for joining me during this series. It's been a great pleasure to slow down the process and give you a broader view of the work that goes into a conservation project like this. Altogether, this conservation was completed over the course of approximately one month, with some treatments being active and others passive. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have and as much as I know my client will. As always, you can find more videos on my YouTube channel and take a peek at the daily workings of the studio on Instagram.